<laughs> awesome. I'm super excited. We were live at the perfect time. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I am Tara Carter. I am in the Fort Lauderdale area, and I am excited to flamingo with you guys today as we talk about the technology that every real estate team needs to run a business because that's pretty important. I would say so. So I have the pleasure of interviewing uh, Randy Carroll with Chime, which we're going to talk about Chime today. And feel free to chime in with all your questions. <laughs> That's one. That's one. <laughs> we should be doing make it 60 seconds. <laughs> we should like drink every time we say yes. it. <laughs> water. <laughs> Um, and I am also- It's only like, water, it's Thursday. All right, go ahead. Only water, only water. Although my drink does say party like a flock star, but that's besides the point. Nice. Um, so I have Jeff, uh, can, can you say your last name so I don't butcher it? Seabach. Seabach, Jeff Seabach and Thank Phil you. Sexton with, uh, from Phoenix, Arizona. And I just learned that they not only did 200 million last year, 200 million, that's 200 zero zero million. And uh, they're also, Real Trends Report just came out and they just came back as number 50, uh, 51. Ooh, that uh, is a huge hello. accomplishment. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Good to be so here. I love that. <laughs> Will you guys um, tell us kind of what your guys' relationship is for the dynamic of your team, how your team is structured, and um, obviously if you guys serve of any areas besides Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona. And you go ahead. Yeah. Here we go. All right. So Jeff and I have been uh, business partners for eight years now. We started in 2012. We, I was a marketing guy at a real estate brokerage, a family real estate brokerage. We had about 750 to 1,000 agents here in the Valley. Uh, in 2006 is when I started there. In 2011, we got bought by Realty One Group. And so I became the director of marketing for Realty One Group, helped them redesign realtyonegroup.com over the, the year of working there. Uh, Kuba asked me to, I was the only corporate employee in Arizona. Kuba said, why don't you move to our new corporate office in Orange County? And I, you know, I, my wife is from Alaska, born and raised. And so I see more trees in our future, not more people. So I said, you know, no, no thanks, but I really enjoyed teaching real estate agents and helping real estate agents use technology in order to grow their business, generate leads, convert leads. But when I was on stage in front of people, I had never done it to feed my family. And I felt that that was a hole in my credibility when I'm talking to people about technology, because if I really believed the words that I was saying, then I would go out there and do it. And so I got into the trenches and Jeff hired me for 20 hours a week. We started doing some web projects together. Three days later, it was 40 hours a week. Three months later, it was a partnership. And so that was 2012. We did 25 million that year with two agents and one assistant. And then last year we had 30 agents and we did over 200 million. So it's been a fun ride uh, to get there. That's the, just the history of where the C Yeah, market. I mean, I've been a realtor for 17 years. I mean, my niche of the world is I'm a house expert. I've been inside 17, 000, a little more than 17,000 houses, over 5,000 houses with buyers. I mean, when I got into the business, I was mostly a buyer's agent and I did not have anyone to tell me what to do. So I thought when someone said, hey, I'm looking for a house that I was supposed to go out and look at every single house until I found the one that they wanted to buy. Right. So that and me and put me in a, you cut about a thousand houses a year in 2008. I was in over 2000 houses and um, really got into tech buying Google pay-per-click ads because it came from the software industry in 2005. I kind of was just chasing Google click ads all over the valley um, and realized that, you know, wow, this website thing is going to be a, a big impact in the world of business. And um focused all of our attention on creating a content rich website that has been the backbone of what we do in growing the way we, we've grown. So. Well, I love that. And I want to, I want to get in straight to the goods, right? Okay. So yep. those that are on the call, um, use the chat box on Facebook and or the chat box for zoom and please give us your question. Feel free to chime in. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. so Patrick said, can we raise Patrick, our volume? Is that loud Georgia. enough? I moved the microphone closer to us. So hopefully that helps with the volume, Patrick. I'll, I'll stand closer to the computer as well. Yeah, I'm yeah, excited because no one ever says that because I'm really loud. 
Um, all right, so. <laughs> so let's talk about, let's go back to the beginning of when, Phil, you were, you had your partnership um, with Jeff, and let's go back to the very beginning for what would you say was the biggest piece of technology that worked really, really well that's helped you that you guys have probably kept consistently from then until now? So when you did 25 million to 200 million. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing was, is it was really how our partnership began because I had made the decision. I saw the turn of the, the foreclosure era was ending um, and I knew that we were heading back to what I considered a normal market. So my idea to make a big splash was that I wanted to get a content rich website. So I convinced my wife at the time to spend everything we had in savings to um, buy a uh, a SEO website, search engine optimization, right? So, um, and when I bought it, they built it in a certain technology. And I didn't know how to use it. So then I had to go to Phil who worked for his dad's company to help me like trying to figure it out. And I was blogging on uh, active rain. And that's when Phil was like, what did you say? He spent 30 grand on a website and he's putting all of his original content over here on this website. I was like, well, if you're going to write all these articles, why don't you put them on your own website so that you can build up your domain authority? And he said, well, that was, it was an extra 2,500 bucks to get a blog on this website. So I didn't want to do that. I just wanted the website. I was like, give me your password. Give me your login. Here you go. Now you have a blog on your website, right? So put all of your energy here and then sell your content on the Active Rain site. So you go over to Active Rain that's got the audience and you say, Hey, I just wrote this crazy article about what I'm seeing with foreclosures in the Scottsdale area. It's on our, it's on my website over here if you want to check it out, but the stats are crazy. What we're seeing is just, you know, like no other market that we've been in before. Let me know if you guys have any feedback and you sell the click off of, from the audience to your content on your domain so that you can help build up your domain. And that's the strategy that we continue to use today. It's just what has, what changes is where you sell the click where the audience is, is what changes. Because we don't do that off of Active Rain anymore. Now we do that from email subscribers, from Facebook groups, from text message campaigns. But it's the same concept to get people back to our site, which is our number one best, biggest, most important technology in our world is our own website. Oh, I like that. And so what other systems do you have running through your website? So if we had to go back and say, uh, say what is your favorite piece of technology that you have that is giving you the largest ROI? Is it is it your website? I mean, probably it's definitely our website. I mean, we 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 spend over the last five years, we've probably spent uh, I don't know around, or let's say maybe over the last eight years, around a half a million dollars into our website. If you, it's s i b b a c h dot com. So we have a video strategy that we follow, a content and and how to. Uh, help agents. You can see we got videos of all the communities um, and we have generated, I mean, generally we do between 60 to 80 million in internet leads a year converted sales. So it has definitely been a huge ROI. I mean, in the beginning I was getting, why I brought Phil over to my team was I was making money converting the leads. And then I was like, wow, maybe I could give leads to agents on my team and we all could convert and I could teach them how to convert. And then the ROI went down because by myself, I was getting 10 to 15 to one ROI, but you know, it's more scalable when you have lots of agents. And so now it's a three to one or four to one, but it's still, I, it's something that we could, you know, expand. So um, I think that website's number one. So, and so. I, I came into it as a um, SEO guy and the PPC guys were different class. That, the PPC guys weren't the real web guys. They were just buying the traffic. Whereas that was the, me. I was the, the SEO guy. guys had to earn the traffic. We had to get out there and, and it was free. We didn't have to pay for the lead, although we were delusional because yeah, the, cost, a little sweat equity. The, the cost is far from free. But to take the SEO guy and to pair up with the PPC guy is when we saw, you know, the traffic went from 20. I mean, we went from 2000 visits a month to 25,000 visits a month, right? Like we saw a huge explosion of our traffic and we, we still to this day use a combination strategy of SEO and PPC to generate leads. And so WordPress is the base of our website that we use. And we have a, um, when people click on the home search button, we, there's a four letter word that they go to 
and I, you can bleep it on here. I don't know if this is safe work, but sync. That... <laughs> <laughs> it's tied to our CRM, right? So the leads come straight out of the website we that? and right that. into <laughs> our CRM. I mean, we went, we went from, we, the first, we were originally with Act. I mean, we, we, we went to More Solds and then we went to Infusionsoft, meaning that this, we're still looking for a great CRM. If you want to chime in, Randy, I don't know, but uh, you know. <laughs> well, now, you know, now that you asked me to chime in, I might as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when it, comes, when it comes to SEO friendly, PPC friendly websites with the CRM, um, there's a reason, there's a reason why Chime's on this webinar right now, right? Because it is most definitely, hands down, the most innovative product in, in that space. And, and we kind of went through y'all's background and not very many people know who I am. So let me just throw this out here. Um, been in the CRM space for real estate agents over five years, part of a sales team that grew a certain company to a certainly large size that set industry records in terms of what it ended up being sold to for and, and uh, looked around the room and said, this place isn't going anywhere. So I got an opportunity to come on board with Chime, which is an incredibly fast growing, very powerful uh, startup CRM. So when I hear uh, Phil talking about SEO and I hear Jeff talking about PPC, those are the two things we do quite well um, and our CRM, is full of some of the automation that I know that you're about to get into. Awesome. Yeah, we definitely want to talk about the automation. And I, David brought up a good point just now. And he said, you know, a lot of agents don't have a half a million dollars to spend on a website. And correct me if I'm wrong, though, Jeff, you said over the span of eight years, though, you spent probably invested that much money into your website, correct? Yes. I mean, but we, we coach, we have new agents on our team. And I want to just go right to his question of, you know, what it, it's really uh the that's the long-term vision in helping people but uh we came up with an analogy i'll let phil get into it a little bit an acronym an acronym is that the key part when agents are getting started and they don't have a ton of money the first thing that they need to look on is their it's their google me presence and agents do not realize that when they're doing a just sold postcard campaign or they're doing a farming campaign that it's only going to be or an open house. Yeah. Like every, all of their marketing we think can be two to three times more effective with, uh, uh, this one thing that we with the acronym P B T I P B T I is what I consider the four most important words in marketing today. And that is people believe the internet. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you laugh because I'm yeah. glad that you laugh nah. because it's comical, but it's just the truth of it. And so when we started to have a website that when they, when somebody gets you at an open house or they get your postcard or they get your mailer saying from your database mailer, and they're thinking about maybe possibly there's a chance reaching out to you. What do they do first? Google you. They Google yeah, you. Yeah, they pick up the yes. cell phone. They type it in. Is what shows up helping you or hurting you? What shows and up? They it, ask depends. Alexa. it depends what shows up, right? It, it, this, whether this it's helping or hurting. But people believe the internet. Like if you go to cbach.com and you look at that website, the people that are going and looking at that site now think that we sell houses for no other reason than they believe the internet. And we have to leverage that. Like with Chime, the, uh, the analogy that I'm going to use, and forgive me if I stop talking, Jeff's going to jump in and I want to make this point. <laughs> <laughs> the analogy that I use right now is most people get a website and they think that they are going to buy a website and then that website is going to produce business. Whereas in our world, a website, whether it's through Chime or it's through whatever, but if I buy a Chime website, that is something that is a plant that I just put in my office and I have to water that plant. I have that, that plant has to grow. Otherwise, if you don't water the plant, you just buy a plant. Like, Go buy a fake plant. You don't need to, you don't need a real, like the fake plant isn't as good as the real plant. We all know that. But when you buy a real plant, you have to water it so that it will grow. And that's how we look at websites. The reason why their investment has grown to how big it is over the last eight years is because we continue to water the plant that we set up, which is the website. But to speak to the person that's new, I mean, the thing is, is the story I tell is this, because a lot of people are like, well, does everybody use the internet? I was on a listing appointment in North Scottsdale about five years ago, 
and I pulled up to the front door and I rang the doorbell and I, I like to stand back a little bit because I was going out for a listing appointment. And the guy, oddly enough, also stood back from, from the door and he's like, Jeff, I'm like, John? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I wanted to let you know that I'm blind. And I was like, because I'm the internet guy. And I'm going, okay, all right, well, not a big deal, right? So he said, but I, I want to tell you something. He's like, my wife has dementia and we're going to sit down and talk to her. And I just wanted you to know so that when you're talking to her, you know, just so you're framed up. So come on in. And I'm like befuddled here because I'm sitting down with a blind guy and a, and a, and a sweetest old couple you ever want to meet at the table. And I'm like, John, first question I always have when I sit down at listening appointments, I'm like, John, you know, how did you find me? And he's like, well, um, Maria, our uh, caretaker, caretaker will we'll let you know. I don't know. We asked her to do it because that's the reality is, is that when people get older, like, okay, well, they don't look on the internet. No, but their kids do, their <clears throat> friends do. They're, in this case, and Maria's like, well, um, they bought the house from George Pickett. We should Google George Pickett. Yeah, if you if it, you know, <laughs> share your screen. Google George Pickett. And let's see what if we think that he's still selling houses in Scottsdale. I wish. Can I share my screen? I, th I think that they gave us capability. George is about to get roasted. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where's George? Let me move this over here. Plus, move it over here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Oh yeah. George Pickett. Enter. Does okay. that guy sell houses or what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. People believe, like, so she moved on. She went away from the agent that they bought the house with, and then she Googled phrases that we were able to show up for. But when you're just starting out, the beautiful thing is there's lots of free opportunities to show up on the internet because I want to give people real usable advice. I always like them to be able to go home and work on it. And the first thing that you can work on is a Google business presence, which is free and getting Google reviews, which is free. And to top it all off is even if you have not sold a house, you can get a Google business review from a friend that just thinks that you're a great gal or a great guy, meaning that it's available for everybody. Cause the next level is you business.google.com business.google.com is where you sign up for that. If you don't currently have one, or if you do have one, that's where you go to edit your, you're um, listening. And then there's two other major websites that you can go to, to, to start to build what we call internet street cred, right? Like, so that you can start to look good because when people are out looking on the internet, they're looking for reviews, right? Like we, we kind of get away from the idea. I mean, if you, the number one website in, in real estate that is most searched is Zillow. So you get, you got to make sure you get your Zillow reviews. I mean, right now we're pushing 900 Zillow reviews, but we're doing that with a purpose because we want to communicate to everybody that they show up and they see stars flashing when you Google our name. And then the, the other major website is Facebook. So you can get people you know or friends to review you in Facebook that show up. So that at least when your name is Googled, it's unequivocal that you sell real estate and that, you're, that you're practicing and active today. So hopefully- Amen that to cool. that. So, so to put it in other words, your presence on the internet is- is essentially who you are it yes it makes all your other marketing more profitable very much so and i just want to preface too one of the things that's free and i'm, I'm a certified uh, referral trainer for michael mayers which is basically a business that is built on referrals right so something else that's free that i got from him that i did a long time ago and has become my newspaper is google alerts so if you're Google Alerts, so what you start with for Google Alerts, literally just Google Google Alerts, and it's the easiest thing in the world to set up. You should have, first off, your name. So I have Tara Carter. I have Tara Carter Fort Lauderdale, Tara Carter Realtor, Tara Carter Real Estate, a Tara Carter South Florida. I have every sort of name. So if there's anything that's ever put out there, my mom is my real estate partner and happens to be the vice mayor of our city. And so I have, I have her name. I have every developer that I work with and I desire to work with. My top referral sources are also in there. Do you know what is so cool is not only is that free, I got, I had a gentleman um, that I, that I've been dying to get his business for a long time. I have Google alert on him, of course. And I got a Google alert. It's my morning newspaper. And I don't get, I usually don't get out of bed until I go through my Google alerts. 
and I got a Google alert that he won an award in Brazil from this Brazilian magazine. So the internet put out the world and typically the Google alerts come in like between one and 3 a.m. because that's when the newspaper gets printed or things online get printed. Sure. So, uh, so, this, so he won this award in Brazil and at 8 a.m. made my first call. And I said, congratulations on your award you won. That's what awesome. do you think he said? Uh, oh, I didn't know that you read the Brazilian <laughs> newspaper <laughs> and speak Portuguese. And I was like, ah, yeah, I don't want to tell him. I've been stalking you. <laughs> so Google yes. Alerts, like, watch how easy. Put in uh, Randy Carroll real estate, and then it's added. Put in uh, your real estate team name, added. Put in Randy Carroll Phoenix. Like, you want to have every single alert that comes up. Um, my brand's a flamingo, so I... I don't, people probably think that I just look up articles on flamingos all the time. No, they're from Google Alerts. It's my daily mail. <laughs> nice. I love it. I'm a big fan of Google Alerts and, myself. So, And this comes right to my email? Yep. goes straight to your email. Um, and uh, and you, so anything that you want to know about, and I think it's important is you guys, you guys hit it in the nail on the head is people really do believe what's on the internet and what a free site. I mean, there's so many free sites that you can get out there. So I, I just want people, I love the fact that Jeff, you're so focused on helping the ones that are maybe new into the business. And again, those that are on the call, if you guys want to ask any questions about what you should focus on, let's jump into what would be the second thing. So we're saying the first thing, the website is key. We got to have yeah. a website, right? Only because so it's the, what, we, we believe in hub marketing and everything goes through our website. So just the background for everything. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And so if we had to focus on the top three things that we think okay. every real estate team should have, and the first one being the website is, what do you think the second thing should be? Yeah, this one's going to be maybe a, a little different, but it's actually Evernote, okay? But the way I use Evernote is a little bit different, was uh, because it came out in... The note-taking app? Well, the note-taking app, yeah. E-V-E-R-N-O-T-E. -E. I mean, the one... Rhino. Yeah, is that a I, it's I an mean, elephant. I mean, it's it's a, a memorable elephant, clearly. <laughs> One of those large animals, large mammals. Yes, nothing. No, an elephant never forgets. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm a natural blonde actor. <laughs> <laughs> so Evernote was special because originally I took it to just record lots of notes. I mean, every time we listened when we went to see Darren Hardy speak. When we were reading books, I just took, I like to take a lot of notes, but the, the particular aspect of Evernote was um, we wanted to become a dominant, or I wanted to become a dominant listing agent. So last year I listed $88 million with the houses. So we're getting there. One day I hope to list a hundred million in a year and then I'll be like, okay, I'm a pretty good. I made it. I made it. Yes, exactly. So, but I was, as I said, I was a buyer's agent most of the time and I got, you know, I was listing between 13 and 16 houses a year, and I was trying to figure out how do I climb that hill? How do I get to 25 listings? How do I get to 35 listings? And the reality was, is I thought I needed to come out with a, a unique selling proposition, and that came around my marketing platform and all that stuff. But what I, what I found hard was, how could I get what we talked about during the listing appointment through clearly communicated through our entire team. So I came up with this idea because in Arizona, um, you don't have to legally ask somebody to record. I still do. I ask every single person. I say, is it okay if I record some notes and they allow me a cord, but we record every single listing appointment that we do. Okay. So um, on Evernote. On Evernote. From right? your mobile phone. From your mobile phone. So you just push record when you're in the appointment. And well, it records, it, it yeah, records the and, conversation. And just a, a pro tip, make sure you put it on airplane mode. If not, if anyone calls or texts you or whatever it is, it can interrupt that. If you put it on airplane mode. Pro tip. Right. And then you <laughs> even got to watch. Because the beautiful thing is you can take pictures of the house, right? So what my thing was is it to be efficient, I wanted to be able to – not lose one thing the consumer said to me. But the problem was, is when I was taking the clipboard, right? Cause I, we used to take a clipboard and Phil and I were on like 250 listing appointments together and we were trying to take notes. It was the original iPad. Yeah. Like the original <laughs> iPad. And I, my thumbs are long enough where I could type like this as we were walking around the house. Right? Oh, it was a cluster F. <laughs> 
and we were just trying yeah. to figure out this whole listing thing because we're like, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to grow. So as we were getting more and more listing appointments and then we recorded that I could not have Phil go because it seemed like a waste of time to have Phil go and then the communication, it was productive. But to realize that we wanted to be able to send one agent to a house, because sometimes you're listing a house that might be 150 or 200,000 or 300,000 and you can't send the whole group to the house, it's just unproductive. So it's um, weird. the next day, a marketing assistant types up everything that Hat on that email they then call back the, the agent that was in the house and then that goes to our stager and then that goes to our listing manager all the details that were recorded and it may seem inefficient but you know it's got us to you know it also it, goes to the homeowner yeah i mean so we listed 156 we're, houses last so we, year we've so. got sections on the evernote from the recording that gets transcribed into pros what's good about the house cons what's going to hinder us from getting the highest, most best ah. number ever. Um, well, work, just... work, work to be done on the house so that we can get you higher numbers, pricing, and then marketing. And so every listing appointment after we go on within 24 to 48 hours, the client gets an email with a link to the Evernote, not the recording, but the transcription of those different points. And then they get a I chance to that. change it. Yeah, they, they like it too. It's worked well. So are you putting anything else in, in besides Evernote? So, so essentially just to sum that up is what they're using is, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're using Evernote to be able to record the conversation and then your admins are using that as the tool as what your follow-up is with the client that you had that conversation with to talk about right, wrongs, better, meaning what's going right with their home, what pros, cons, what can be done and but then pricing. pricing we put in our pricing in there and then we have the market our marketing plan which is attached up no one gets there yeah. right but yeah. it's still on every single one and we have to update that from year to year as that marketing changes but it most importantly it helps honestly when the seller thinks that i told them this price or this price or the seller thinks i said this price and we put in the email this is the you know price that we wanted to go we go with. back to the Evernote, you know, 30, 45 days into a listing. 60 say, days, 108 days. You're like, no, you told me this. And I'm like, uh, because it's in our CRM, it gets copied. It's then it's a link in our CRM. If it's a live copy. They have a live copy. I have a live copy. I'm like, see this? Like, do you remember yeah. reading this? No, right? like, there's no getting around that. And you know what else I love too is that um, because it's Evernote, what's the number one thing that people complain about about real estate agents? Lack of communication. Lack of communication. Lack of communication. So you're Randy, using. Now you have to say it. Lack of <laughs> 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 number one thing. Thanks yeah, for no. chiming in, Randy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> love that. So, um, so I think that it's, I think that's awesome because then you have everything that's right there. And I don't know if you guys have heard of the app. I've been using Otter a lot, O T T E R, because what's great about it is that while we're talking, it actually transcribes everything from you from voice audio, and then it also tags already your whole conversation that you were having, wow. and it also puts keywords for what our conversation was. So, so if, if Otter was listening to our call right now it would already put it into uh, text for me and then it would put keywords. They'd probably pick up the word chime at least probably a few times that would probably be in yeah. there. Um, and uh, if you can go back and listen to it on uh, record and you can even listen to the sound of it while it reads it. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. It's free. I, I can't wait to check it out. I mean, the challenge mm -hmm. of the, why we, why we like the Evernote and the listening is because I'm recording the upgrades in the house. And when we're using words like mill guard and things that those are, you know, I mean, it's just hard. And then I throw in some, what I call Seabach isms, some things that it, those are hard to, uh, for, for voice technology to pick up. Auto transcription. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love that. But, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. Maybe That's we something. can train auto though. It's not, it's not hard for auto transcription to pick up. It's hard for everybody to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, now you've piqued my interest. What is what is a uh, Seabachism? Um, like just, yeah. nope. just okay. I'll give you one. Out. Right. So what I call rule of eight. Rule of eight. Okay. Yeah. The rule of eight is Seabachism. Yeah. Right? Where we all know what that means. But what's not... that mean? Now I need to know. No, rule of eight is just. I mean, I was listening to a Seth Godin podcast, and he was alluding to it. Is that perfect? Doesn't get out the door. And that there's lots of different things that in trying to, to sometimes people will, you know, uh, 
paint the back fence and spend $4,000 when they got appliances that are 20 years old and they invested in the wrong things. But I mean, there's just, I mean, that, that was the one off the top of the head, but yeah. But rule, rule of eight is meaning it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, and so many sellers want perfect, but usually eight out of 10 is going to get you as high of a number as 10 out of 10 will get. So we try to rule of eight the house so that you save money as a seller. You're not investing into everything that which ultimately lets you accept a price that's more realistic. I mean, we're not going to get into the, the whole details, but what happened was, is that we, I was watching the show Property Brothers and when I came across a house that was not, um, let's say, uh, the upgrades meant it was going to get this price, but the homeowner thought it was worth this much. And that if I could get them to do it, you a don't say. Bit, well, yeah, <laughs> don't say. Really, I don't know if you've ever That's been in a house happened. like that. <laughs> Seems never, unrealistic. Right? Are you going? Are you going, Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> well, we you know, but we work between, especially you know, under three or four hundred thousand. That's a different thing. But when you're in the five hundred to two million range, where is where we sell a lot of houses, there's just this trying to help people get top dollar, but just trying to explain people because sometimes they're like, well, if I'm going to redo my bathroom, I'm going to spend seventy five thousand. And there's ways that we could help people improve houses for 20 or 25,000 and just trying to help them understand um, that this can help get them where they want to go. So, yeah, I like John that. Is that is rule, perfect. Rule of eight. Yeah, John is it is. Perfect. John is better than perfect. So, we talked about, um, I because I want to really dig into uh, this is a perfect opportunity because uh, Phil and Jeff, they have been really looking for a CRM that offers a technology that, that they've already been through a few. I don't know what the, what the term would be called that you guys, you basically had a bunch of ex-wives and now you have a wife right now that you don't really like her, but you don't want to get rid of her because you've already invested so much time into her. So yes. you're debating if you should cheat on her or not, right? Yeah, so we're I very loyal. That. That's our challenge. Yeah. I yeah. get it. <laughs> we, have, we have a very specific like rule. Analogy. Yeah, yeah. I'm married, married for I'm 20 years. For yeah. 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 Like, I only got one wife. And we, right, so we're best talking friend. this way. No, no married men or women. We, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't uh, flirt with any men, uh, married men or women. So no, let's go with that, with that friend. That friend that you, yes, know, you really need yes. to break up with. It's an unhealthy relationship. It's toxic. Um, and Buster just said that you, we, you guys are missing out without Chime. So what technology are you guys looking for that you guys really love? And, and then I want to hear from Randy on how Chime is, when Randy chimes in, and tells us how Chime can be beneficial. So what what is important to you guys when- All right, well, I mean, it's number three, technology. if you're following along. So the first most uh, biggest, biggest piece, piece of, of technology was our website, second was Evernote. The third most important piece that led to our 1700% growth over the last eight years, how why we sold a billion dollars was the utilization of CRM. But the odd part is when we were getting going is somebody out there said, oh, you, there, it, the idea of thinking that it was going to be one, just one technology. Oh, I, the way that I say this is that I have a dream <laughs> that one day we will have a CRM that handles all of the communication <laughs> that we have with our client. And that one day it will come to us where it will text, it will email, it will understand that we can do bulk will edits. It handle it will handle sold data? Please Facebook messaging. Like I want a CRM that handles all of our communication in one spot. And I still have that dream. I'm not going to let it go. But now that I'm, you know, uh, 14 years into the industry, I no longer like that dream is actually dying. Right? I don't think that there is one tech that can actually do that. So what we try to do is minimize the silos that we have. And right now we use a competitor to sync, right? And some of our complaints, some of our gripes with, uh, that we've shared with Randy and that we've shared with Mike McGowan is just like in Phoenix, for example, are the tool that we use now doesn't have sold data. Well, you know what the most relevant content is for somebody that owns a house in a neighborhood? Sold data. You know how simple it is to set up a sold data search so that you're touching base with people that has data that they actually care about. Like that is such a simple thing that we don't have right now. And so we have to create a different silo that that data comes from. Because in Phil's dream was like, well, hey, maybe we wouldn't have to use our Flex MLS software to do that. We would sure like to do that with inside our CRM because we had a dream. Right? I still like that, do. That I we still could do. do all 
the things that communicating with our client is. Yeah. I just want to minimize my sl- my silos. But the thing I want to emphasize to the newer agents, just because I always there's always lots of newer agent questions, is the presence of an IDX integrated CRM. Because I hear a lot of these new technologies out there, the greatest CRM, and then if it's not integrated, where they they have the homes data to go with the CRM, so that way because it. Because we learned this when we were at Boomtown before we left that because they didn't do a great we job either. We were with either. Infusionsoft before we left yeah, that. Yeah. Boom, boom, but boom, but boom. What we learned with going to, because Infusionsoft was not a IDX integrated website, is that we could not see when we had a lead and we'd set them up on a search and they were looking at houses that they could search on their own and we could see where they went and we could follow that. And what we did not realize is that the agents on our team, the buyer agents now, or just all our agents, we have only one type of agent. But when they're when they get a lead for a buyer and they can see that that buyer got their homes that they sent them, but then went out and looked for other homes in that neighborhood, in Tempe or in Monterey, so that they could look and see homes that the agent believed that the lead was real because they could see the the buyer shopping on their own. And that correlation led to us doubling our lead production in 2017 when we moved to Boomtown. And now it's continued through sync. I mean, we're in the first quarter. And, and Chime does it as well. Yeah. Right, that to me is a given piece right now, is if you're looking for a CRM, our biggest advice is to find a product that integrates IDX with your database. That mm-hmm. is, that to us now is a given. I don't know, I don't see the day that we're going away from that. And, and Chime, obviously, so how does Chime earn, uh, um piece into what they just said that that is important to them yeah so first and foremost there's really no reason to have a crm that doesn't have an idx integration at at, at this point in the game right it's that's just when you have an opportunity to track what your clients are shopping for and you decide not to it's like amazon deciding not not to watch what you're shopping for like why would they do that right so that data is super important and Something that I'd like to circle back to here with uh, Phil and Jeff is, is, is retargeting, right? So much of that money that they have spent on getting traffic to their website uh, could really be best utilized or really optimize that spend with retargeting, which is a, I'm not going to say new, but newer concept than PPC was eight years ago. So I'd love to hear uh, how Phil and Jeff are using retargeting, if, if they're using retargeting at this point. We were bad at retargeting. We turned it off. We don't. We don't. Manage it. <laughs> yeah, we were. Um, we're kind of like do-it-yourselfers, right? I like a good DIY project. If you look sure. at my Instagram handle, you'll see how I almost crushed myself cutting a tree down in my backyard. But um, I, we attempted to manage retargeting ourselves, and that was like, forget this. We, Probably we, not worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, well, we. Yes, we're able to generate leads. Yes, we're able to manage PPC ourselves. And I think, though, retargeting, retargeting is, is, is great when you don't have an internet presence. Like, I think because of well, there's our... there's different ways. Yeah. And, I mean, I think that we're using retargeting, right? That is a big word right now. So, obviously, there's some tools that use retargeting just to give your seller the impression that you're, their listing is everywhere. I think you know which ones. I'm not going to say their name, but you know what I'm talking about. And that's more of a... Uh, that's a retargeting that we don't care for right like i want retargeting that actually provides value so if we're able to serve the people back into our site with real stuff that's better than just trying to give the seller an impression that their house is everywhere because we're being specific and following them around the web sure yeah i i can certainly see the lack of or the, the diminishing returns on remarketing a homeowner's listing to that homeowner i don't i don't really know how much uh how far you're going to get with that but something that uh, the goal I see is to save the phone calls using from that, the though. sellers. The goal is to save the phone calls from the sellers saying, "What are you doing to market my house?" It's been uh, what are you doing to market my house? Well, what is the point? Of, I mean, okay, so that's the point of showing the homeowner that their own listing, right? But if you yeah, just stop to, that yeah. complaint, no, it's one that we still get. I mean, if the problem is, is people sellers. Um, even how much? I mean, we spend one point one million dollars a year marketing our houses for sale. And they still are like, what are you doing for me? Like, you know, we've had, you know, five, we send them f- pictures of 5,000 views of their house. And they're like, but 
but you're not in the Arabian horse magazine. Yeah, like <laughs> they, the, the amount that they doubt that their house isn't on every website everywhere is amazing, right? Like they're like, well, you're doing nothing. So, so when it was just the two of you selling 25 million or the 30 some plus odd of you selling 200 million, the question remains the same. So maybe some things just never get solved. <laughs> Correct. Well, I want to know about <laughs> Chime. What, what does Chime do with retargeting? So with what we use is Facebook Dare, and, and Tristan loves talking about Dare ads. He's all about Dare ads. It's Facebook dynamic ads for real estate. And what is so unique about Dare ads is if I'm a home, if I'm a, a buyer lead, you know, someone going online looking for a home, you know, this is San Francisco. If I don't know anything about this place, to be honest. Uh, if I'm looking at this property, and I, you know, the internet or Chime is going to recognize that it's a $1.5 million home, three bedroom, one and a half bath, about 1,800 square feet. Yeah, oh, I just sold that house in Scottsdale for for three eighty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait, what? Seventeen hundred square feet? It has one oh, and a half bathrooms for one point five. Right, exactly. Like that's. <laughs> what are we in, in Fort Lauderdale? <laughs> in, in Atlanta, you get seven houses for that price. So, <laughs> but uh, ultimately, the idea being now that Chime recognizes this is give or take the home I'm looking for, you know give or take a standard oh, deviation either way. Oh, they took their own photos for 1.5. <laughs> this kills me. Well, it's only 1.5 in San Francisco. So, you know, maybe maybe you can't afford a uh, I like the detached garage. They don't even have stainless steel appliances. Sorry, I can't help it. Yes. Oh, man. House. I All right. No We're... hardware. There's Corian countertops. You so. guys. <laughs> I'm gonna stop my screen share. It's like, screw it, screw it, we can roast the it. listing now. High five, Tara. <laughs> Girl. Yeah. Uh, no, so. Michael Guerrero, if you're watching this, I, I'm really sorry. Not sorry. Can you please hire a photographer? <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys are fun. Back, back <laughs> to the buyer lead. Yeah. Yeah. So, let me be the bad cop here. Uh, Getting us focused. So back to the, the way we use retargeting is we're going to show similar or like homes to your buyer leads to get them back to your website. So when I'm scrolling through my Facebook news feed, I'm seeing listings like the ones I looked at while uh, on your yeah. website. I just looked at a JBL Bluetooth speaker yesterday. And then, and then when I got on Instagram, there was a JBL Bluetooth speaker ad. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And here's a great story. Here's a great story. I had a client one time who uh, was, was telling me about their experience with retargeting. And um, she, she tells me, I was using retargeting. One day I got a phone call um, from, uh, from one of my leads. I ended up listening with them. And at the end of the transaction, I asked, so uh, by the way, you know, why did you call me to uh, uh, come list your home? And she said, well, I saw your ad on the Wall Street Journal's website. So I figured you must be a big deal. But meanwhile, that's just a part of the Google ad network. Okay. That's just retargeting, right? But this client thinks that this agent spent Buku's amount of money um, marketing on the Wall Street Journal, right? PBTI, so. PBTI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, ex exactly, exactly. It's gonna be a book one day, so. Yeah, so uh, so let's hear this. Phil, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it out that we can't tell I'm a very transparent person. So the CRM you guys have right now is boom time, correct? No, sync. sync. Four letter sync. I'm sorry, sync. Yeah, so, CI Commission Sync out of Atlanta. Yeah. I think Randy, is... Randy's old employer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. We, that's, that's, that's my ex-girlfriend, Tara. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, see. And, 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 yeah. and just okay. for full Good. disclosure, we did let them know that we were that we wanted these things to happen for a long time and they the text I'll give you one more gripe. All right, one more gripe. We generate leads in places other than our CRM. And when we have those leads imported into our CRM, there's not a way for us to have the permissions allowable for auto messaging to go out to that contact because they didn't opt in on the website specifically. And that part is a hard part because when we have open house leads, when we have leads that come through our WordPress website, our gravity forms, our landing pages from other tools, 
Unless it's powered by our current CRM, we can't utilize all the tools in our CRM for legal purposes is what they say, which I understand that attorney's opinion. But even when I take all of their opt-in language and put it on all of the other forms that we do to show that this is the same, I still can't get an auto text to go out to say, thanks for stopping by. It was nice meeting you. Because the, the, the top technology that we're using that's number four is texting right is that phone calls are less obvious and that we were look we're looking to auto to um we auto text people we just don't do it from inside of our crm yeah so we have different silos so now we There's got a couple different silo we got another a different silo and it's right we don't want to have several crm tools when we have one that we're paying a lot of money for we want that those technologies integrated into our crm and that What's we're hoping special? to get it what is there a special today randy there is check out the chat in order to uh, okay, get a okay, link yeah. for anyone good. Go, and and hold on, does Buster work for you? He, <laughs> <laughs> it, it must be a pseudonym or a pen name. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't Buster, personally. Buster McGowan Levin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So uh, Randy, yeah. why would you say your you switched over from your ex? friend to now your yeah let's friend. get into the details the the details okay let's okay. get into the comp package totally fair <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. all right so um for, for first there, there was a personal reason i got to do something new at chime that i wasn't getting to do at my old job and so there's and i wanted to do something new so there's a personal reason um the the second reason is kind of going back to phil's point that when I first started in the industry, um, there was kind of this nuclear arms race to be the first all-in-one. Like, we're going to do it. We're going to do everything. We've got it all in our package. I and have a dream. Mm -hmm. I, they have a dream. Exactly. And I, I didn't know any better when I first started. I said, yeah, all-in-one, very realistic, totally attainable. Uh, you definitely don't need specialization in technology, right? You can just be everything to everyone. Um, I didn't know any better. Uh, a few years pass by, the disillusion kind of wears off, and I realized that this space has caught up so quickly in technology over the past five years that being the all-in-one is, is, is rather uh, unreasonable, right? It's, it, it's so... Dream crusher. You're a yeah, dream crusher, yeah. Andy. I'm so, sorry, Phil. I hate to say it. <laughs> I hate to say it. Yeah. Um, but to be the all-in-one, it's a, it's a fool's errand, right? So if you want to be the best all-in-one, you have to play nicely with others. And some companies do that. Some companies don't. What I really enjoy about Chime is that we have aligned ourselves with strategic partners who are really good at what they do. And we, and we let them be really good at what they do. And we be really good at what we do and we play nicely, our technology talks well, it, it limits the amount of double entry that has to happen, it reduces human error. Um, we, we have a, a theory of abundance in our sandbox. You do your job well, come in our sandbox. You do your well, transaction management, lead generation, um, ISA services, we picked the best in class, best in breed, and invited them to come play with us, right? Um, not all technology companies do that very well. So, so what's uh, in your sandbox that makes it so great? <clears throat> so what's our, so who, who did we invite to come play in our sandbox? Um, yeah. Well, so right now we have, uh, so if, if Chime is your IDX CRM hub, right? We offer beautiful websites with a very powerful CMS tool, very <clears throat> powerful on the automation side, texting, et cetera. There's really two places, um, where I see uh, folks can, can uh, use other services uh, to really complete the lead journey, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. There's lead generation, website, CRM, um, transaction management, right? So um, we, we currently have an integration with BrokerMint that we're improving. We've kind of done our due diligence and thank BrokerMint is the best in class, best in breed, uh, transaction management and commission accounting uh, platform. So we, we have an integration with them and we're going deeper. Um, 
We've got a few strategic partners on the marketing side. We think Curator has a great history uh, of digital marketing. Dippity is kind of the new kid on the block who's doing really well. And then there's Verse.io on the ISA services side who has done so well in real estate, they've actually branched out into other uh, other verticals as well. So, uh, oh, that's that. cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you say, Randy, is your favorite piece of technology that Chime offers? If you had to pick one that you feel like, I, I know that it's amazing because I have all your tools in your sandbox. Everybody wants to come play in your sandbox and not the other sandboxes. Uh, what tool do you have in your sandbox that you would say is probably like, the mother load, like you're gonna win the sand castle. You're gonna win the sand castle contest. Yeah. If so, I were to so um, I would have to go directly to our AI assistant. Uh, lead lead uh -huh. conversion. Lead conversion is the uh, kind of the final frontier of real estate technology, in my opinion. Pretty much any other space has has a few competitors in it already, but our AI assistant is. Tr truly one of a kind in the sense that it's genuine Google powered artificial intelligence. We don't use a keyword chatbot type feature, uh, which is what a, which is what all the other chatbots really on the market are today. Can I ask you a tough question? Please. All right. Well, did you build it or buy it? Oh, uh, we used uh, we built it using Google's. Um, uh, they have TensorFlow and uh, Dialogflow. Uh, those are their two artificial intelligence products, and we use Dialogflow. Awesome. So we built it. We spent several months throwing leads at it to have it use machine learning to understand conversations. And for those, oh, I like that. So for those who may not understand the difference between actual artificial intelligence and keyword type recognition. If, if, if you said a full sentence to me, as a human, I would take the full context of that sentence and respond appropriately. That is what artificial intelligence and machine learning does. If you told me, if, if you said to me, I do not want to live near a highway, the, key, <laughs> the, the keyword might just pull up highway and now all I'm doing is sending you properties on the highway. So that keyword recognition doesn't fully understand the context of the sentence, nor does it pick up on weird Seabachisms that people might use in their yeah. everyday conversation. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Randy. Randy, can you actually stop your screen share for me, please? Yeah, uh, always. And, and then uh, what would Jeff and, um, and Phil, Phil, the other guy, what would be, <laughs> what would be like, what are you looking for in order to make that switch and drop your friend and and get a new friend named Chime? Oh, well, boy. all right, hold I on. I my answer. Uh, well, which one? Do, who gets to go first, Sarah? You decide. Uh, I'm gonna go Jeff. Actually. Okay, okay, all right. I mean, the reality is, is that the biggest issue we have in real estate right now is low supply. Okay, so right now in the Phoenix Metro market, we have. 9,341 homes on the market. Now, a normal market would be around 25,000 homes to 35,000 homes. So the good part of a low supply market is the market is on freaking fire. Like COVID it didn't matter. Like we're past, like that did just like, the market just said, we doesn't care. The interest rates are so low and we have not, we have people aren't moved, are, you know, old people are staying in their houses too long. Therefore it's restricting supply. They're not building enough. I want a new house and I want to move. So July is going to be our best month ever, right? We're hoping to do a little more than $30 million in the month. And that I'm not willing to, because when you change, when we change 40 people on the CRM, guess what? There's a little bit of a disruption and I just want to wait until the mute, the, let's just say, let's not get off the ride until it stops. <laughs> Cause right now we're going a hundred miles an hour in a circle and I'm just afraid to, to jump off. So Phil, what do you think? <laughs> I love you guys. That's one answer. <laughs> well, That's so clearly not Phil's answer. Clearly not how Phil feels. I, I think that you can include parachutes and everybody can jump off and be safe. <laughs> Uh, there it is. But um, 
MLS 8.0, so there's pain, right? We feel pain, but when you feel pain, you don't just jump from system to system, you create workarounds. And so we have, we can run our business currently with the systems that we have in place. But the new piece of pain that will push us over the edge is MLS 8.0. MLS 8.0, I'm not sure how much you guys have talked about it here, but that's where you can no longer have coming soon listings out there that aren't on the MLS. And so in Arizona, our MLS has a status called coming soon now that is private to realtors. So realtor to realtor, if you put a coming soon sign in front of a house, it has to be a coming soon on the MLS as well, that when I log into the MLS- Or you get fined. When yeah. I log into the MLS, I can see it, but I can't, that field, that data- is not shared, is not syndicated. It doesn't show up on IDX. It doesn't show up on Zillow. Those coming soon listings are legit realtor inside of the MLS listings. But as a realtor, I can email that coming soon listing a one-off to my client. Okay, so what did the MLS do with 8.0 is create a new silo where now I have to be inside of the MLS in order to give them exclusive pre-listing data. I said to Chime and I said to Mike and I said to and I'll say to you, Randy, MLS isn't trying to force everybody. I'm pushing on the CEO of, M of our local MLS here to say, let's syndicate that data, not publicly, but let me send it to Chime where Chime can protect it. And Chime lets me as an agent log into the back end and send that data one off. But at least I'm inside of my one silo that I want to manage all of the data. And I know that it's not easy. I know it's not simple. But look, if you do that, then that pushes us over the edge and we're there. But that takes two changes, right? One is the MLS to agree to give it to vow like technologies. And then two is you guys actually being able to consume that data in a way that protects it and doesn't let all of our, um, all of those coming soon listings to be displayed publicly. And therein lies the beauty of our partnership as you can see why I was like, you know what, I'm gonna focus on selling houses and you can just talk about <laughs> shit over there that needs to get fixed. <laughs> hey, yeah. yin and yang, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But true okay. though, but it is a challenge. It's just like, we're- I gotta give you a goal to shoot for, Randy. Yes. Like we're yes. playing hard to get. We're goal. playing hard to get. The yeah. voters didn't know the world that they were creating. They just made the decision so that they could remain the market. And now they're pushing all of our houses into one place and we're just trying to learn to live with it with a smile. Do, do, you, do you think that NAR ruling is gonna last? Oh, the answer is yes, question. I do. Until, um, until a better option comes up from what it is, is that what they don't realize is the, the unintended consequences of what happened. And I mean, the biggest thing that I see is we sold a house during coming soon to a retired VA vet. Okay. That he was just happy because we we're in a multi offer situation. And he had no money down, but he really wanted to live in this neighborhood. But that house, he'll, he wouldn't have had a chance to buy the house because if that would have been pushed to MLS, there would have been 10 offers. Now, it still sold for top dollar and it barely appraised. The appraiser's like, you know, um, he, it, was at the, it was as high as that house could appraise. So I knew that we were not going to exceed that, but my retired uh air force captain was excited for that guy to get that house in this heart really competitive neighborhood because he would have been outbid by a cash buyer so are we now pushed i think they're pushing the deals to the wealthy people and i don't know that that was the intention of mls to favor the people that have cash to get the wins versus the people that are financed because right now finance deals in our marketplace are whenever we're going up against cash are losing and that's unfair to those people that don't have as much you know we're, we're, we're I, I think we're trying to make things equal in america okay. we're not right. sorry okay. right. All right. All right. All right. we're not going there we're not going there my turn my turn, my turn. i i think what randy was really asking is this could just go away and then you guys don't have that problem but i want to i want to preface this is that we're on a system that because how long you've been? How long have we been in the business? I've been in the business. I got licensed in 06. In 06, sold data in the MLS was not shareable the way that it is now, right? So sold data became a new data source that all of the tools out there had to adapt to in order for us agents to use. Okay. 
Sync hasn't in our marketplace. They don't have this, they weren't able to change fast. They weren't able to pivot to include that data in our marketplace. That still does not exist. Okay. Right? So Chime, there's an opportunity for new data. And my, I'm, I'm very interested in what system are we gonna move to that is adaptable based on changes because they know, we know that there will always be new data sets that are gonna come to fruition. And if you're too locked into the way that it is now that you're not able to adapt, then I don't know that I need to change to you because that's a temporary solution until a new data source comes. Like prove to me that you're a system that can adapt to the changes quickly. And now like, let's run, let's live, let's be happily married. Well, so, so, so principally, that's something that you need and not just your CRM, but any technology company you decide to get in bed with. Uh-huh. No doubt. But it's Understood. the one that's here now. And I, I only bring that up because of your comment of, do you think that 8.0 is going to go away? Whether sure. it goes away or not doesn't change if I want to, you know, if I would love to go to a system that can adapt to the changes quickly. Mm -hmm. So what, let's uh, talk a little bit about the team side of the business. Um, what's important about managing the technology for you to help manage your teams, right? Because I know some folks are very yeah, apathetic. Assign, it's our window into what our agents are doing, right? Well, like the reporting, I, we have virtual assistants that manage reports where they have to pull the data out because the internal tools, the internal reporting system that we have now uh, just aren't flexible enough. Yeah, I mean, as far as a team goes, I don't know that you can really build and manage a team without utilizing a, a good CRM and then having good uh, data behind, I mean, good processes to make sure like nomenclature and systems to move stuff through the funnel. We have lead groups that are managed from the data that comes from our CRM. I mean, it, it drives so much of what we do. It's why I had it as number three on our list is mm -hmm. that, um, I think it was the, I mean, it was the first, the, the first system I chose in going with a CRM was a company called Morsolds, but just simply because I could route that lead to the agent at a just very simply. And now it's, I mean, that was, you know, it's eight years ago and now there's way better technology and stuff like that. But the, um, it's our window. I mean, the thing is, is it's it, having a ubiquitous app that the agent can receive the lead and click on the lead is because everything is about speed to lead. I mean, because we're getting leads from, from Zillow, we're getting leads from realtor.com, we get leads from our website. I mean, we have, um, you know, nine different lead sources that we track in our, uh, Phil created this awesome Google, uh, what tool was it built on? Data Studio. Data Studio and extracting the stuff out of our back office software. So, because lead source is the, what I'm talking about, team management is mm -hmm. how we make the decision on what we continue to invest on leads. Because I, I think the industry is overblown with, I created this many appointments and I created this many appointments and, I, and we're looking for closed deals. Right. Mm -hmm. We're looking for not cost per lead. Not cost. Don't care about I don't that. care about who, who cares about cost per lead. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. No, it's, Nobody. it's over. Yeah. What we're looking at How about is cost per dollar. Yeah. About that? Yeah. So, um, so Randy, do you have any of these pieces that they're, that they're looking for and, and how can time fit in for that? Yeah, I mean, there's there's there's, yeah. there, there's quite a there's a quite a bit of reporting that goes into the Chime platform, right? So if you want reporting based off of agent performance or lead source performance. All of that is going to be accessible within uh, the, the Chime reporting, reporting dashboard. So all of that is, quite, quite frankly, if your CRM doesn't have it, if you're not signing up with Chime, you need to be signing up with something that does. Um, again, Phil and Jeff have, have pointed out on several instances at this point that the CRM is the, the window into their business, right? So if you can't, figure out this information, which lead source is working for you, which agents are working, which aren't, then you're, you're, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. And I think that's an issue a lot of um, agents run into is they don't know how much they spent. And so subsequently, they don't know how much money they made, right? So what do you, Phil and Jeff, what do you calculate until your cost per client? Because this is the second webinar in a row I've been on where um, folks such as yourself actually mentioned that cost per client is what's important and cost per lead is a, is a phony number. 
Oh man, cost per client. Um, last year we had 429 sales and our marketing budget was 1.1 million. So I don't know what that number is. I'm not kidding. $200 or $2,000? $2, $2,000. Is that right? Roughly. I mean, the thing is that our average sales price last year was uh, five twenty nine. dollars So that helps. Uh, the, Where are you going? 1-1 one, one divided or, by I guess it's a little less, yes. Divided by four twenty nine. Twenty five hundred dollars 2500 bucks. $2,500. Yeah. <clears throat> Cost per client. Yeah. And that, I mean, our average commission probably per deal was but that's not randy we don't talk about cost per client i talk about cost per dollar by lead source right because if i have a lead source that generates me a dollar at 13 cents or i have a lead source that generates me a sure. dollar three dollars then i want to turn one up and turn one down right, right? it's you, that's it what i'm asking for yeah yes not, yeah. not we, so, we we divide it into because we have the you know we're gonna do I don't know, close to $70 million in referral business this year, right? So that business has a different ROI than um, what we consider lost leader business, which is uh, uh, business uh, to get to get new clients. So actually so, talking about allocating marketing spend per client is kind of like talking about AI. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. Really. You're, like, smart, you're smarter than that. Well, let's see. So if a client that came to that came in, uh, let, all right. So I got, I got referred a new build complex, right? We list the new build complex and one of the existing owners in there um, wants to sell his unit. The list, we, we listed the listing expires. Then the lead, then a buyer is talking to a friend who bought in there and the friend goes, oh, call this agent so that they can sell you that off market property now. Where do you give the original lead source, right? Like that, let's say that that friend that bought it came from an open house, right? So now do you attribute the open house for that sale? Do you attribute the re original referral for the new big comp, new bill complex for that sale? Or do you attribute the flyer that actually had the phone number that they called for that sale? Phil, Phil sucks at a mastermind group and they're like, well, we had this ROI. And like, like, bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All I, of I would say all of them because then, and then you do the great retrace and the great retrace is probably one of my favorite systems ever to go back to that original. And the goal is to see how far along down the line can those steps go from when you met them. And I do the great retrace calls every Friday. And it's great because I called uh, tomorrow. I have two people to call and the one Sandy, I'm going to call Sandy who is four referrals before who helped me lead to John, but I wouldn't have met John if I didn't meet Sandy from Trisha and Stephanie before. So when mm -hmm. I call Sandy and I say tomorrow and I say, Sandy, I just wanted to call and say, thank you so much for introducing me to John. And she's going to say, who's John? <laughs> <laughs> You introduced me to Trisha who, and Stephanie, who introduced me to yes. Trisha. By the way, mm -hmm. you guys should connect. I was able to meet John and help him, and now we're under contract, and we just got to clear to close. And then I do that for every step um, when I uh, when I meet them, and then uh, usually at closing or a clear to close. And then they're always like, "Oh, so the goal is it's called the Great Retrace," and I just I just do it on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so Beautiful. your answer to that question is uh, yes, uh, all of them, and they're all <laughs> lead gen sources. So if I got that referral, I would go back to the builder too and say, "Thank you." so much for referring Stephanie to me and the builders would say, who the hell is Stephanie? And then you tell them because you gave me this opportunity, it led to this, this, and this. And it's just a trickle effect. And it's also a touch to be able to have communication with them. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's beautiful. So that's, that's, that's from seven levels of communication. Again, I'm a certified trainer from Michael Mayer and seven levels of communication is the best book in the whole world. I love that. Nice. Um, I want to wrap up this call for technology. Uh, and if you had to think, well, two questions to unfold in one, and I want each of you to answer this. Oh, wow. uh, first question would be, uh, if what is something that I did not <clears throat> ask you that I should have asked you? And second, what is your favorite piece of technology besides we went over website being number one, Evernote and your CRM, and Randy's favorite is the AI system that Chime offers. And by the way, we have the LCA discounted member uh, group uh, uh, link as well for you guys to get a little special gift uh, courtesy of Lab Code Agents. So thank you, Chime, for that. We really appreciate you. So All right, I'll take it first. I'll take it first. You go. Sorry, the two right. questions were, what should I have asked you and I didn't? What should I have asked you that I did not ask you? Uh-huh. And the second one was and what? And the second one was, what is another piece of technology that we did not go over that you feel like everybody yeah. needs to have okay. in their pocket? All right, well, you should have asked me, and I think that every – 
agent should be very weary of this and listen to people pitch technology. And that's, Jeff, are you profitable? Okay. Are you profitable? Because unfortunately, I think people buy too much stuff in real estate. And that I see lots of people that are focused on more sales, but not more money. So the answer is yes, we are. And I am in the top 1% of income burners in the US and have been for the last you know six years, seven years consecutively. So um, the goal for to sell real estate is to make money and retain money. We buy houses, but you know, to, to build our wealth, like we're in this business and we can be uh, prop tech to hell. Um, and that sucks. So my last piece of technology is my uh, Bank of America app. Uh, <laughs> awesome. I was not expecting that. That's awesome. Because I can transfer money to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I like to look at it because the key is that are we making enough money? And Oh my God, I love you. I That's love you. Awesome. Oh Follow God. this guy. <laughs> That's awesome. I do. And I have to say too, uh, Gary, I saw him with Keller Williams. Gary Keller, I love that he, tr he changed his transition for the people on stage, not to the ones that were selling thousands and thousands of homes. He, he would not allow anybody on stage the last um, six months unless he, they sent him his, their P&L and they actually showed that they were profitable. No more of this, like, I'm number one, which by the way, I just found out, I just found out yesterday that I'm number one, again, uh, year to date, and I had the best month last month. Uh, so it's not about being number one, are you profitable? So I love that question, because I think that so many people just forget, you know, it's not about the shiny objects and the awards you win, it's like, are you really making money? Like, are you making money and are you managing it? So Bank of America is your favorite. Um, Phil, you wanna take this one? Thank you for providing a buffer because I'm not as nearly as exciting as that. Um, what should you have asked but didn't? Uh, yeah. You know, most of our agents say, well, what should I say next? Right? Like follow-up is more important in our world than the meetings because the follow-up is where the winning happens. And so just how we follow up with people, I, I guess I... I I don't know how to answer it in one in one question, but what do we actually have to do in order to win business, I guess would be the question that you should have asked. And that is chase people harder than we ever thought that we should. We don't, we can win in the appointment 30% of the time, but then you can also win in the follow up another 30% of the time. And that can be the difference between profitable and not. And so what technology piece helps you the most with the follow up? The telephone. Text. The text messages, the email yes. drip campaigns, right? I mean, even on new agent, on new leads that come across, one of the, well, I guess, one piece of tech. <clears throat> yeah, we it's just a text app. It's green. It's the on their phone. App, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when a lead registers on our site, we have a, a first name question mark. I didn't get the roaring reviews yeah, that you got about no, the bank of America. No. <laughs> no, that was the. Uh, that, no, that was, was it. <laughs> It's revolutionary. Yeah, right. Like the weird thing is, you could hear the mic dropping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First name question. Oh my god, I love this. I yeah. love you guys. I really do. I really do. I need to come there. Um, and Randy, what you got over there? What questions did I not ask you that I should have asked you? Ooh. And what is your favorite piece of technology? Oh, I didn't know that I qualified for these two questions. Okay. Yeah. What is what is the thing you didn't ask me? Uh, that you should have asked me. Uh, ch -ch 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 well, that's all the time we got for today, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was so inter I was, I was like everyone else. I was just watching Phil and Jeff. I was. So <laughs> um, I, I would just say. Um, I know what you should have asked, Randy. Is Randy yeah. what's the favorite podcast that you listen to that Jeff and Phil produce? Yeah. Uh, the Jeff and Phil show. The solution. Well, no, the solution. The, a a real, real estate podcast. podcast. Yes. The solution of real estate podcast. That's my favorite podcast. I listen to it religiously. It comes <laughs> out at least, I mean, in the car, on the airplane, on webinars. I'm listening to their podcast. Yeah. With the mask yeah. on. Yeah. With the mask yeah. on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if I had my head over the ear headphones, I'd have them on right now. Yeah. Um, and then my favorite piece of technology. I'm gonna have to say is uh, uh, just mobile apps. 
whether it's a Bank of America app or my CRM app or Venmo when it's re- when I'm receiving versus sending. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right on. Awesome. Sweet. We Thanks. always love Fair receiving, enough. don't we? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, well, you guys are awesome. Uh, again, so Jeff and Phil are in the Scottsdale and Phoenix, Arizona area. And Randy with Chime has this amazing uh, Lab Code Agents exclusive offer with the link. If you guys, um, it, it will be, it is in the comments and it will be posted. This is recorded. I didn't get that question this time. I love that. So that means there's intelligent people that have been listening on here. And yeah. I love flamingoing with you guys. You. <laughs> uh, I'm in Fort Lauderdale and I hope you guys Thank have a fabulous you. day. Yeah, Thanks, awesome. Bill. See ya. Bye, guys. Sarah. Bye. Bye. Bye.